Well, 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 it's Wednesday night. You have nothing better to do. We have nothing better to do. So why not we get together and do nothing together? That's what I say. All right. It's a little more than nothing. It's much more and more than nothing, ladies and gentlemen. It is the weekly Third and Lang podcast. Myself, as well as this handsome fella on my right. I guess that's my right. Matt Lang back with us. And Coach, welcome back. We are thrilled to be back once again to do another edition of the Third and Lang podcast. My friend, how are you? Welcome to uh, fall, if you haven't figured that out by now. And uh, getting closer and closer, a couple weeks away to playoff pairing night. Well, we had a grinder of a day yesterday um, with rain showers and cold breezes and practice. It was absolutely horrendous. Uh, by the time I got home and got some got some food in my belly, I had a really good night's sleep. Uh, we're doing good. Uh, we're doing good here at Olympia. We had a big win, uh, four and three. Uh, we beat Pleasant Plains. We have a big game this week. Uh, it's going to be at Auburn, uh, five and two Auburn, um, a storied program uh, that had a lot of success with Dave Bates over the years down there. And uh, they're going to be a formal opponent. They're going to be playing for their playoff berth, official berth, you know, and we're trying to punch our ticket into that yep. big dance. And, um, you know, we're playing good football right now. Um, school's going good. Kids are going good. And, um, you know, here we are. It's, it's crazy to think we're in week eight and we're right there on the doorstep. So here's a question for you uh, before we start digging into the classes and breaking down the, the rankings and what have you. You mentioned the rain, and let's face it, depending upon where you're at in the state, at least in the northern part here, it's been a really nice early fall. We have had very little rain, very little up here. Just yesterday and today, we've gotten some, and it, it, it's supposed to clear out now, and we're supposed to be done for the rest of the week. So could Friday be what, what I like to call it again? I know it'll be a couple of days, and probably a lot of it will dry up hopefully by then. We haven't had a night where I like to refer to it as, no, not the great pumpkin, but the great equalizer, meaning rain and mud, especially in the smaller class football. Now, where I'm going with this, Matt, is again this week, and this has been a theme since very early on this year, and we've talked about it. It's been a chalk kind of year. I yeah. mean, it has been the favorites continue. I mean, I think there's maybe one or two teams that have entered the polls from 1A to 4A, and that's it. It's it's all the favorites continue to win. Could that be part part and parcel of the fact that it's been really good conditions? We haven't had the slop night. We haven't had those teams, you know, the Lena Winslows that absolutely live and die and, and just seem to prosper in that weather. Can that end up being an impact when it's all said and done? And how big of an impact is the weather? Well, I still feel like when you get into week 10 and 11, probably 11, 12, 13, you know, I still think like some of that stuff can kind of get in your head a little bit and right. I think kind of impact uh, the, the, well, I mean, I think it does impact. I mean, I think that the, I think the big thing is when, you know, and I think, uh, just conditions in general, general, you know, I mean, I know in our game here last week against Pleasant Plains, we had a mild breeze, but it really affected the punt game and yeah. it really affected kind of how we had to play. And we, we took on a Pleasant Plains team that it's the first time I've seen this in a long time. They were a ball control, Bill Walsh, dink and dunk offense that moved the ball up the field against. They were well coached. And when they had the ball, when they had the wind behind them, they were tough to defend and the punt game and our kickoff. And I'm talking about us a lot here. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. But it really had a big impact in terms of what was going on. So I've said this before time and time again, when you have sudden change and sudden moments in the game with special teams, I think weather is a big part of that, you know, um, with wind, rain, slippery football, um, turnovers, Anything can happen and everything can happen and you better be ready. And by the time you get in the playoffs, everybody is scouted up and coached up and you're not getting weak sisters in the playoffs. If it's going by chalk, well, we're going to find out, but you know what, if it's a one versus a four or two against an eight seed, that four seed on that eight seed might win if the turnovers and the, and the wind direction and the weather's bad. 
I always find it amazing every year when when you get that one Friday where you just look outside in the morning like, yeah, it is not going to be good tonight. And amazing the impact that that has. And, and let's face it, I don't care whether you're ground and pound or you're spread it out. You need to get used to those conditions. And, and you just you can't replicate it until you play through it. Well, your muscles get tight. Your hands get yep. tight. You got to catch the ball. Uh, most people nowadays have cutter gloves. Uh, some, you know, but some people, you know, like I always tell my guys, you know, uh, when I'm getting, you know, gnarly and nasty with my guys before the game, I'm like, hey, some of these spread teams, they want to play seven on seven. We want to play tackle football. You yeah. make those guys, you make those guys do this and have alligator hands when they're going across the field. Yeah. And I think cold weather and wind and elements to the weather, they will have an impact on a teenager's brain and their psyche going into a game and how they execute. Yeah. Well, let's keep it away for a while. I'm okay. <laughs> well, it's today was great. great. Today was great. It's but been I'll great. What, I will tell you this. By about 5, 36 o'clock when that sun went down, that temperature went down. Yeah, and it's, it's going to get colder. I had my T-shirt on and I didn't have this on, and I was a little cold. It's it's going to get colder. We we could have a chilly night on on Friday around the state. So, but it should be dry from everything I'm seeing. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. The further we go along, that's going to become more of a storyline. There's no doubt. All right, Matt, let's go through. Let's start in class one. And again, this is the theme, a theme that we've been talking about since very early on in the season. And I think what you're doing, you're seeing this in the polls. It's also reflecting in a various different playoff projections i know my guy steve susi over at the friday night drive does his i've got catch 22 on my board that does his own and and then matt it's been amazing how how some of these classes have been incredibly stable and 1a is certainly that example so again number one team in 1a no changes here you know winslow at number one uh ridgeview at number two camp point central at three hope academy at four shelbyville at five athens at six Fulton at seven, Greenfield Northwestern at eight, Ottawa Marquette at nine, and in this actually uh, dropping this week a bit, uh, St. Bede at 10. They started at uh, last week at six, they're down to 10. Had a big loss to Princeton, uh, 56 to seven. Of course, Matt, you know, Princeton State ranked themselves. So again, that's a uh, pretty good quality opponent. I think Princeton's number three in 3A. So again, uh, the pollsters, and I think rightfully so, you. You whack St. Beat a little bit, but when you play a good opponent like that, you got to respect the fact that they're playing up a very, very tough three opponent. So again, one through ten, no changes, stays the same in one A. And I know you want to talk about uh, Kiwani. You've got some info, and you also want to get into Lena Winslow a little bit too. Obviously, well, big win last week. I'll, I'll talk about the. I think a team that could be a sleeper team in one A. And that is, uh, you know, Weathersfield, Anawan Weathersfield. So here's a team that's that's had success over the years. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, they 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 battled, uh, you know, uh, Isaiah Bruce and and Lena Winslow, really tough there in Kiwani Weathersfield, in a quarterfinal game. Um, they've always had they, they, since they've had this co-op, they've just been they've done some really good things, and so you know, they are a team that you can kind of watch out for. Um, as we kind of get into uh, the playoffs, you know, they uh, they get the right draw. They could be a team that can win two or three games. Uh, Zen Rashid is the running back. Dylan Horry is the quarterback. And Matt uh, Sentency is the linebacker. Those are three players that I think you can watch out for in terms of Anawan Weathersfield. Uh, I do want to talk about Lena Winslow because I think that freight train is getting ready to collide as we get into uh, the 1A North. Um, and that is Lena Winslow, you know, eventually possibly against Ridgeview, you know, in the North. Uh, but Ridgeview, I want to just get kind of touch some things on Ridgeview. A huge game for them. Uh, they go over to Eureka in the HOIC showdown. Uh, it's tied 7-7 at halftime. They literally shut down. Jacob Mora in the quarterback, uh, Co Coach Bachman over there, Eureka, has a great, great, great program. This was their moment, but it wasn't their night. And uh, they controlled the line of scrimmage, Ridgeview did. Um, they had three huge fumble recoveries and two interceptions. Two of those interceptions were, um, were taken away by defensive back uh, Brandon Campbell, and they were in the end zone. 
So, you know, you know, it's one thing to get an interception, but get two of them in the end zone to kind of take the kind of the sail, take the wind out of the sails of Eureka, uh, really just turned and shifted the tide. Uh, Logan Fermanski is a defensive back. And then, you know, Caden Farrell, you know, had 180 yards and two touchdowns, 7-7 seven, seven at halftime, 21-7 final score. Uh, Ridgeview, Hal Kyoto uh, is now getting ready to, you know, win these next two games and punches punches away into the playoffs uh, with the HOIC uh, title. Uh, but on the on the flip side of that, way up north, the powerhouse continues to just turn out big yards. Uh, yep. Their three-head attack, let's just put it this way, last year, Lena, um, you know, they got punched in the mouth, and they got punched in the mouth by two, Dupec, 30 to 24, and Dupec kind of stole that NUIC crown. And uh, don't think that that was not weighing on Lena Winslow's minds. Um, you know, they, they have a three-headed attack, and Gunner Lobdell, he's the kid from Orangeville. He had 184 yards and two touchdowns. Um, Gage Dunker, um, I'm assuming he's related to Jennings Dunker, who uh, the other night was just playing on the Iowa offensive line against Illinois. Uh, he had 150 yard, 54 yards and three touchdowns. And then Z Jake Zeal had 12 carries for 116 yards and one touchdown, and uh, they took care of things. They run behind Henry Engel, the All-Stater, and they held NUIC leader, uh, leading rusher A.J. Mulkey, to six yards. Wow. So this 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 Lena Winslow team, you know, if you get Rick Rick Aarons on here, he'd just say, hey, I got hard kid, working kids that are weight room freaks. And they are flexing their muscles right now. Yeah, they, no beat doubt. Dup they beat Dupec, and they send a message after coming off an emotional win uh, last week against, uh, who did they beat, Woodstock? Yeah, Marion Central. Yep. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, you know, here we are, and we're, we're approaching week eight, week nine, and nothing's really changed in terms of the dominance of Lena Winslow. So it's going to be interesting to see how things fold out, and if, you know, if Ridgeview's going to be in the north, uh, and Anawan Weathersfield's going to be in the north, those are two teams that maybe can fight and battle um, but you know, we'll see how it folds out because it's going to be one through sixteen, north and south. Yeah. But right now, Lena Winslow is uh, sending a message to everybody in the state that they can beat anybody. No doubt about it. Good job there, Matt. Class two A. We'll go through it uh, again. I'm using the AP rankings here for one A through four uh, A, and then we'll use uh, NUIC for their eight man, and we'll certainly get an eight man. So don't go anywhere. We got plenty of eight man information for you. Class 2A, again, no, not a whole bunch of change here. Uh, St. Teresa, Decatur, St. Teresa, number one. Maroa ranked number two. Bismarck Kenny at three. North Mac at four. Wilmington at five. Rockridge at six. Tri-Valley at seven. Carmi White County at eight. Johnston City at nine. And Nashville in, interesting enough, uh, the Hornets with a win, a 14-10 win over Pinckneyville. Out this week is Pena, Matt. But Pena... This is how tough these polls are. Pena gets a 55 to 19 win over Greenville and they get kicked out of the top 10. <laughs> obviously, obviously Pena beat a voter who went to Greenville. <laughs> That's all I can figure. Well, um, I, I think in 2A, I mean, I think uh, the big storylines right there are right now is that I think Tri Valley will have a big game coming up here against Eureka. Well, in the greater Decatur area is the center of the universe. Well, right now, right now, and let's just call it how how it is. I mean, uh, Saint Teresa is dominant. Maroa Forsyth comes off a huge, huge, huge yeah. win against Williamsville, yeah. and I know Josh was really, really excited about that. Talked about his his top dogs. You know, that was a big win for Maroa, and they. And not only was it a big, big, big win, but, you know, uh, you know, in some ways it was kind of a, a revenge win. You know, I mean, Williamsville's kind of been the talk of the town. They've got this facility. they got this program. But, you know, until someone beats the man, they're not the man. And right now, Moroa is still the man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Josh um, he does a great job, you know. So we'll see how this all unfolds uh, with what's going to happen north to south. Uh, I think Bismarck could be a team you could watch out for. Uh, North Mac could be a salty team. And all these stories in 2A, um, I'll do a little bit more research and we'll get some more stuff in 2A. So I apologize to the 2A people, but we'll uh, we'll reach out this week to you. And Nash Nashville again, Nashville's just a traditional power 
down in Southern Illinois. There's no doubt about it. Been great in basketball, been great in football. Uh, they take a lot of pride in what they do. So uh, no doubt know, about it. we're going to start reaching out to you guys. So just hang in there. Yeah. So class three, a, again, uh, a little bit of shuffling, a couple of losses here out of the top 10, but again, you look at quality of opponents and uh, which I, again, I love, I'm glad the voters do that. And, uh, so a couple of teams drop, but they stay in 3A this week. So the number one team, Immaculate Conception, you mentioned the machine. The machine continues to move along. Some big games for IC Catholic, though, especially week nine against Wheaton St. Francis, Matt. That will be a gigantic showdown for sure. Uh, Reed Custer, 7-0, and number two. Princeton at number three. Byron at four. Prairie Central at five. Mount Carmel, the Golden Aces at six. They are hosting... Marion yep. Central Catholic this week. So that'll be an interesting game on Saturday afternoon after the uh, Hurricanes make a six and a half hour bus ride from Woodstock to Mount Carmel, Illinois. That is a nice trip. That's to, even the, to the Snake Pit. To the Snake Pit. To the Snake Pit. That's even farther than I'll drive this weekend. And I usually yeah. get out there, as you all know. Um, continuing, uh, we mentioned Mount Carmel, uh, Williamsville. Originally at third, they are now down to seven, but they do stay in the top ten. So Williamsville now at six and one. They are number seven this week in the AP Class 3A top ten poll. Seneca, again, terrific story with the Irish. They're at eight. Tolono Unity at nine. And Eureka, they were at eight. They dropped to ten. They lost to Ridgeview, as we mentioned, 21-7. So, again, Matt, just some really good football, some good teams that – couple lost but you look at the competition and it's it's hard to argue they still most likely should be in the top 10 well yeah you know and i mean i think everybody knows that 3a north is loaded uh princeton i mean you got to hand off to cut you know tip your hat off to ryan pearson i mean they have a big win they get a big win this past week um yep. they're starting to flex their muscles um down in the south it would be a situation where, you know, we're going to have to find out who that top dog is, you know, and every year, every time that Scott Hamilton has made a run into the state championship, you know, he's always taken on a dynamic team, you know, and um, they're going to have a chance. Um, they're led by Matt Brown, a running back, uh, Kale Rodden at quarterback, uh, Nick Nosler, a senior defensive end, really a dynamic player. And then here's the thing with, with, with the cathedral in the country football is what I call it. And it's a beautiful, beautiful facility. I just took my freshman team down there. Uh, it's just an unbelievable facility. And they have so many kids out for football down there that they don't ever start a guy two ways. And they keep their legs very, very fresh. And they have this platoon system down to a science. And after losing that first game against Prairie Central, in which they just weren't quite ready because they were young. Scott now has the has the engine humming and purring. And, you know, watch out for Tolono Unity. He's a Hall of Fame coach. I don't know how many more years Scott has left in him. I don't have any information on that. But I'm sure it's kind of coming down to an end. He's been there forever. He's only missed the playoffs one time. And, uh, you know, watch out for Tolono, Tolono Unity. Uh, they're good. They're finishing strong, as always. And they got some toughies coming up here too. Yep. Yeah, no doubt about it. So again, a little bit of an overview for 3A. We'll go up to 4A, Matt. We'll take a look at the top 10. Again, not a whole lot of change here. Sacred Heart Griffin now number one, solidly the number one team in class 4A. Richmond Burton, number two. Uh, Wheaton St. Francis, as I mentioned, a huge game in week nine against uh, IC Catholic. They are number three in 4A. Rochester at four. Joliet Catholic with another loss. Their second loss this week lost the double overtime to uh, class 7A Brother Rice uh, this past weekend. So again, a tough loss for the Hillman. They are five and two. Stillman Valley at six. Carterville at seven. Macomb at eight. We're going to talk a little bit about Macomb with Matt here. Wheaton Academy still in at nine. And in this week, Bree Central. Bree Central gets a 20 to 13 win over Roxana. That gets them in. Uh, out this week, Matt, uh, Genoa Kingston lost to Dixon, 21-13. So, again, close loss. But, unfortunately, Genoa gets knocked out of the top ten. In comes Breeze. 
Well, yeah, you know, uh, one through, you know, one through 10 and 4A is, is really good, you know, and obviously we have kind of the, uh, you know, the, the heavyweights, the teams that are just, you know, we're just kind of waiting to see how this all unfolds and who's going to yeah. be the top dogs in the north, top dogs in the south. Uh, sometimes when you get on the western side of the state to our to our listeners and viewers, you do get kind of different population pockets of how it all forms. You know, at the last school that I was at in terms of Havana, um, you know, they're in the Prairie Land Conference. Um, so I just want to send a little bit of a shout out to all my friends at Havana. It was a great two years for me to be able to coach there at Art Duffelmeyer Field and uh, to make lifelong friends. Uh, I send I send. I send a shout out to everybody in Havana. It was a great time. And, uh, you know, it's going to be really interesting because they have their hands full. They're four and three. Coach Hammond at Havana has done a great job. Um, he's the right man for the right job. And they're four and three, and they have a great, great player in Dane Olson. Um, Braden Barner's a quarterback. Uh, Hunter Nichols is a, is a running back. And then they have this, this kid, um, uh, I'm trying to think of his name. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Jaron Boggs out for football. Anyway, these are all Havana Duck football players. Yep. But we're talking about 4A. So they're taking on a very good team in Macomb. Okay. So what does Macomb have? They're very balanced offensively and defensively. They have a kid on the defensive line, offensive line. Last name is Ladd. He's a game changer. Uh, but where they're really deadly is their running backs. They have two great running backs. And I don't have their names, but I do know – the quarterback's name, his last name is Duncan. He's got an incredible arm. And then the game changer in Macomb is the wide receiver. His last name is Jeter or Jetter, uh, Jetter. And he is, he's all state caliber. You know, he's a wide receiver. They're going to throw the long ball, vertical stretch, dig routes, wheels, screens. They're going to get the ball to him however they can get him. Uh, Jetter's dad is the head basketball coach at Western Illinois University. Uh, he used to be in a, a lifelong assistant for Bo Ryan at Wisconsin. So, you know, the, the, the bloodlines run pretty good in that family. You know, here's the coach's son is playing a little football, uh, but I think his best sport is baseball. I think he has a scholarship to play baseball somewhere, if, I have a, if my information is correct. Yeah, let me, uh, JT Jetter is who you're talking yeah. about, a junior, only a junior wide receiver. Yeah. 6'2", 170 pounds, and then the um, – Looks like the two running backs you were talking about is maybe Max Reiner. Yep. A senior, 5'11, 190 pounds. And then they have another running back, a senior, Lindsey May, uh, number 23, uh, six foot, 160 pounds. So, yeah, it definitely uh, looks like you've got some key kids there, definitely for, uh, for McCollum, the Bombers. They've, they've done all the things they've had to do. You know, they've beaten, beaten the teams they need to beat. Uh, you know, talking to Toby Vallis at Farmington, you know, they're good. <laughs> they're good. They're good. They're very good. They're very good. Uh, it, how the, cool, how cool is that nickname? The Macomb Bombers, man, you know, and, awesome. they got a, and they got a great facility, you know, they're great. Yeah, I've terrible. seen, I've seen, um, there's some, there's someone on Twitter, a young man, uh, Keen, I believe his last name is. Okay. I'll have to go through. He like does the media stuff for Macomb high and, he does a lot of stuff at the high school. You, you know, it looks like I believe he's a high school kid. Does a really nice job, though. So, well, I'll have to reach out to some people over there. I know Jeremy Anderson um, is the is the basketball coach over there. Um, you know, just uh, Macomb is a very unique town. It's uh, oh yeah, it's kind of lost its it's lost its luster a little bit in terms of the population and and some of the polish of Western Illinois is kind of rubbed off. But I know when uh, you know you're going this week, you're going to Moline. Yeah, and uh, you need to say hello to uh, Sean Ta Sean Taylor, the basketball coach, because he used to be the head coach at Macomb. I know, he, I know Sean Taylor very well, sir. He's a very good friend of mine. There you go. And he will tell you that some of the glory days of him coaching over there at Macomb. Yeah, he coached over there, and there was a certain someone that was an assistant coach at Western Illinois University basketball team. His name is Brad Underwood. There you go. And Brad Underwood yep. used to be an assistant over there in Macomb, and they did a lot of talking and a lot of drawing. Yep. And um, so, you know, I think Macomb is just a really unique old school setting over there on the western side of the state. Uh, if, if Havana was a little bit closer to my kids, I don't know if I would have ever, ever left Havana. Yeah, I know that was a big factor for you for sure. West, western Illinois is a neat area. 
and there's good football over there with Camp Point, yeah. Quincy, Carthage over the years, and now Macomb. But the big pink elephant in the room is Macomb's in 4A, and that's going to yeah. be and that's going to be a challenge. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. And and here's one other thing for our 4A fans to keep in the back of your mind. You know, depending upon the projectionist you listen to or talk to, there's a lot of talk, and that talk mat is getting louder and louder. That Sacred Heart can wind up in three. Well, I know that worries a lot of people. <laughs> you bet it will. It'll worry a whole lot of people. Because you met, you throw, you look at that three A field, and and we talked about the north, how strong the north is. Boy, you put you put Sacred Heart Griffin in the south in three. Yeah. That automatically becomes a, a, a really, really tough side of the That play. shakes up the whole cookie jar. It and does. I, and I tell you, you know, but you could go up and down a lot of classes. I think that that to. could also that could also change the geography of the whole bracket as well. Yeah. It's pull it south. Yeah. And I think like with 1A, I kind of look at that number and it could go up to 329 or something like yeah. that. If that's the case. And I, I'll tell you this, I'll get, I've already talked about this team. I need to talk about them more, but Shelbyville, I mean, if they're in 1A, you know, they've always been a 2A team. Yeah. You know, there's there's some 1A, there's some 2A teams that could dip down into 1A. We saw that. That, that, that changes that changes 1A right there. We saw that last year with Wilmington, traditionally mm -hmm. 3A dropping down to 2, and I thought they benefited from that. There was no doubt because they were able to avoid the yeah. Byrons of the world and teams that they would absolutely just yeah. butt heads with every year. It was a totally different path for the Wildcats this past year year and they they wrote it all the way to a state championship in two ways so yeah there are definitely schools that'll it'll, benefit it'll be interesting though this was with the bombers and the ducks you got two contrasting styles colton likes to run the ball um you know coach tanner over there macomb he's got dynamic playmakers uh last year when i when havana hosted the uh, havana hosted the bombers it was a 21 21 to 7 game we played them tough it's a 4a school against a 1a school um macomb a good story uh, probably going to win the game and probably ride out the, the season 9-0, and and then we'll see what they can do in the playoffs. Yeah, well, and then the positive, obviously, is 9-0. and You're getting a first-round home game. You're going to be a high seed most likely. So it's, uh, yeah, a lot of benefits to getting that 9-0 and record. There's no doubt about it, especially in a class that is still going to be separated by geographics, for obviously, for 4A and below. So. Sure. Sure. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how all that shakes out in a couple of weeks. But uh, Matt, I know we want to get into eight man. Um, we have someone to a uh, little shout out to, if you will, someone that's been uh, connecting with you and just helping us tremendously, dropping great information that you have tonight. I know you sent over a uh, playoff projection list for eight man, and and Jordan Hotman from Decatur LSA has been totally hooking us up with information and jordan thank you so much and uh matt i know you've uh, had some dealings with jordan here and no, i just uh, you can't, I, got can't I, got it out. I got lucky i mean i was watching tv one night and wand out of decatur the news station you know which i watch pretty religiously to just to get all the scores from you know tuscola decatur st Teresa, maroa you know i mean i tape everything and you know and then jordan hopman comes on i don't know jordan from this blade of grass i'm looking at and I sent out an email and then, you know, boom, we're, we're talking and we're communicating and he's sending out text messages to me today as I, you know, try to get a hold of him and try to grasp information, you know, and, you know, so thank you, you know, coach Jordan, but, you know, like just some of the information he's kind of sent my way and some of my re personal research, you know, and eight man football, you know, just some players that you might want to listen to and hear about is, you know, some of the top players, Peace Bumba from St. Thomas More. Yeah, I know Peace. I've talked to him. Very good yeah. player. A lot of speed. Outstanding recruit. He's definitely uh, yeah. 2023 under the radar for sure. Connor Nye from Milledgeville. Uh, Leighton Miller from Decatur LSA. He's the kid that we talked about last week, how he had a 600-yard game. Uh, Talent Talon McElroy from Pawnee. Um, you know, Brock Salto from Polo. And then probably the best player in eight man uh, is, you know, Caden Drosty from West Central. So you take these names that you're going to start hearing about as we get into week, you know, week nine and 10. And we, you know, we get into this six team team brackets and eight man football, which is it's kind of like the old, you know, 
Division Two, Division FCS stuff that we used to have back in the day, you know, and that we still have with the Illinois states and the Southern Illinois, you know, and you're going to have 16 teams. Five of those teams going into the playoffs, Tim, could be eight and one. Yeah. Uh, one through 16, it could be loaded. And I mean loaded with good, solid teams. Five or six of them could be eight and one. Uh, STM, St. Thomas More, could be the sleeper. They've lost two. Those two games were to Polo, pretty good football program, yeah. and, De- and Decatur, and they lost them with some key dudes out. Watch out for yep. um, STM. Um, the final eight, so you think about it, you get 16 teams, you play one game, and now you're down to eight. Yep. Four on top, four on the bottom. The final eight are all going to have a chance to win a state title. But right now, I think it'd be safe to say that the odds on favorite right now, if you were to get started right now, is Jason Kirby and West Central. They have to be looked at as a team that is probably the top dog. And I know Jason would probably hate me saying that, but uh, the facts are the facts. Yep. Excellent. And again, um, we are definitely looking forward to uh, spending some time at the eight-man championship game here at the uh, tail end of November. Uh, looking forward to seeing the playoffs and how the playoffs and we'll cover, we'll, we'll definitely recap everything here every week and including eight man football. And by all means, our friend out at Decatur LSA, thank you and, and continue. Hey, we put this out there every week. There's a comment section on every episode. If you've got questions or thoughts or suggestions or information, we love to hear from you. We love the feedback. Um, you know, so please, by all means, let us know how things are going. Um, yeah. What else, Matt, what else you got to add? Well, you know, just, uh, I think another little kind of neat storyline, I like to get into this, but we don't have to, but you know me, I'm a big guy. So I like food. So one of the neat things I think the IHSA has done is they have the savory, they have the yes. savory sweet 16 for the pork yes. shop. Let's get into it. Okay. So here we go. Uh, and I will just tell you, uh, the Olympia Spartans are in the sweet 16 and we do have a secret recipe of how we make our pork chops. And I will tell you that uh, coach edgy Tim behind closed doors when we're off the air, but (laughs) I think this is neat. You got everybody from Kiwani high school, the hog capital of the world uh, all the way to Olympia to normal community who won it last year. And uh, whoever came up with this idea, I think it's just brilliant because you just watch these, you watch these, these grills and well, these people and the prep work. And it's just, it's the great thing about football. It's power and number. It's strength and numbers and you get everybody involved. Here is, here is, and I'll let you get a drink of water there. Here is the difference between smaller enrollment football and the larger schools in Chicagoland. Now there are schools that still do a pork chop and do a very good pork chop. I'll tell you one I was at earlier this year was Barrington of all places. Yes. It's the upper crust of Barrington. They make an excellent pork chop and trust me, look at me. I've had a lot of pork chops over the years. (laughs) Um, But it is something that it is a tradition that has remained in a lot of other plates around the state. And you mentioned there's a lot of pride. When I say someone has a good pork chop, man, I'll get ten. I'll get ten responses from people saying, "Yeah, I'm sure that's fine," but ours is really good. Like right now, I know the fact that I'm in Barrington that I'm going to hear from someone from Lamont is going to tell me, "Hey, dude, yeah. come on," which is it's awesome. So believe me, we're all winners in this. Yeah, it's just well, who you like. And again, you're right. It's it's a perfect sponsorship with the pork producers. I just say it, it's just a natural for sure. And I and I want to send a shout out to Olympia High School because I know with Bryce Hoffman, uh, <coughs> excuse me, our um, agriculture teacher, our ag teacher, his wife, Courtney Hoffman. She's a great softball coach and a great teacher and whatever. But one of the things that Bryce has done, you know, is he had a couple of kids dress up in pig heads, you know, like pig heads at the game awesome. to, to to entice and promote yep. the pork chops. It convinced IHSA like, hey, we got not only do we have pork chops, we got people dressed up in pig uniforms. And uh, yep. and I will just say this. 
when you have these people that cook this stuff and they do this for communities, sometimes they do some extra things. So I'm going to, I have to do this shameless plug for Olympia high school. One of the things they did just here on Columbus day was coach uh, Bryce Hoffman, our uh, ag teacher. He went ahead and did pork, pork patties and he made them and they made over like 400 of them. And they took them out to all the grain elevators on the, on Columbus day for everybody out in the fields. And so that's just one story Yeah, but you go up and down to all these places from Downs, Tri-Valley to Olympia to Barrington, you know, go from Carbondale to Rockford. I mean, from Quincy to Danville, I mean, everybody's doing it. Now, and you just get so many people involved and it's great for high school sports. It is, it is the, it is still a community event and I don't care how large or how small your community is, Matt, it still brings community together. No matter how divided we are politically or whatever, Friday night, there's no R's and there's no D's and there's no reds and blues unless that's the color of the uniforms. Yeah. Other than that, you're there cheering your guys on and your town on. That is by far the best thing about high school football. I hope that never changes. That's why high school football will endure because of the fact that it is truly especially this time of the year, it's, you know, because winter you have basketball and basketball does to an extent, but it's still winter. So you still have to deal with that. And this time of year, the weather's still decent enough. It brings people together. And it, again, to me, that's just one of the many reasons. And, and I've told you this, one of the best things about what I've done all these years are the people I've met. I met you. I mean, <laughs> you're one of, of yeah. many, many down the road of just unique personalities and people that I've met. And the one thing we share in common, we love high school football. We yeah, all we do. It's very therapeutic. It's fun. You know, it's just a, it's a good time. Yep. And, yep. you know, just, you know, when that cold air hits and you're smelling that food. Oh, Friday night. There ain't nothing like it. You know? There ain't nothing like it. It'll be great. It'll be great for me Friday in Moline. It was great last week for me and, Five minutes from my house in Manuka High School and now all points in between. It was fantastic. Rockford on a Saturday. Homecoming. Hadn't been to Rockford in a while. Just thoroughly enjoyable. Yeah, and again, no, just that's it's the fans that it's the fans and the coaches and the players and, and the those communities in each area and each town that make it special every week. So there you go. That that's our ad. So that's our that's our food report. You know, and as we get closer yeah. to Halloween, we'll talk. So, about So, well, we're going to because this is something we do on my radio show at thirteen forty <laughs> WJ right. Law. We talk Halloween candy, we talk breakfast cereal. So we're gonna we're gonna get into this a little bit because it's a lot of fun to talk about. So, well, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm glad I'm able cool. to provide these reports and for everybody yep. that's that response to my text messages usually on yeah. Monday and Tuesday of the week, you know, don't tell coach, don't tell Edge Tim that, but sometimes I'm cramming for the test. You know what I'm saying? And uh, these guys are great okay. at getting that information back to me and they, everybody wants to talk about their team. Hey, we're only, we're only Press good the as the, we're only as good as the information we get from them. So well, it's only, it's only, by, it's the only by, way by you hook, get better. By hook or crook or hell or high water, we, you and I are getting this done. So I, it's, yep. it's a lot of fun. And we enjoy doing it. We'll bring it to you every week all the way through the end of the year. Um, all right. I think that'll do it. So for the coach, Matt Lang, I'm Edgy Tim. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Go out. Try a pork chop. Go to a game. Go enjoy yourself. Will you get outside. It's a perfect time of year. Um, yeah, that's it. I can't sell it any harder than that. So for the coach, Matt Lang, I'm Edgy Tim. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you at the games.